Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. My name's Martin, and I look like a dictionary. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's Martin Sosa. Today, I'm, well, a lot of, well, lately I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys on what are the books that I love to read? What are the books that I recommend that I find inspiring or that have helped me out? And today, I'm going to share some, of the, or one of those with you, and probably in the future, I'll be sharing more with you. Um, but I freaking love books. Just start off with, I love books, and I read them with highlighter in hand because I'm trying to get down all the good stuff and I feel like I'm having aha orgasms and like intellectual boners <laughs> when I'm reading books. It's like people have like spent their entire life accumulating wisdom and they write it in these books and all you gotta do is read them and then you get super wisdom too. So today I'm gonna be talking about one of the books that I really really love that I've gotten a lot out of which is The Defining Decade by PhD Meg J. Why Your 20s Matter and How to Make the Most of Them Now. And what's cool about this book is that it's obviously tailored to the 20-something crowd, but it's not specific to those. There's a lot of universal skills and tools and tips in here that uh, that go far beyond that, whether you're younger or whether you're older. You'll still get a lot out of it. But if you are in your 20-something, this is a book that's definitely worth picking up. Um, so I'm going to share with you some of the nuggets, oh, wisdom, that I've picked up from this book. Um, and what's cool about this is that Meg J, she breaks it down from into work, love, and like your brain and body. So I'm going to break down one of the tips that she said shares from work, which is weak ties and the value of, of relationships to people that you don't know very well. So what's cool about weak ties is that when you're exposed to people that aren't just your close group of friends, you're exposed to people with different resources or different ways of thinking that can expand your mind. What I love about a lot of friends that I have that I don't necessarily hang out with all the time is that, you know, I have friends here and over there and living wherever. Whenever we come back, and we all have different interests, we always, like, I can we can feed on each other, we can contribute to each other in different ways, and all of a sudden our brains are like, so another part in that work life section of the book is this idea of a customized life. So, so Meg had a, a client that was kind of struggling with all these choices and I think that's something we can all relate to where it's like, especially when you're in your 20-somethings um, or in general in life, we're trying to figure out what the hell are we going to do with our lives? What's our passion? What's our purpose? Do we want a relationship? Do we want to work? What kind of work do we want to have? All this kind of stuff and it's super overwhelming. Um, and sometimes we can drown in those choices, but but what I liked about this little part of the book, The Customized Life, is that you can, she talked about how you can kind of customize how you want your life to be. As you go, you can adapt and you can choose different parts of it. You don't have to fit into a particular mold, you can create whatever mold you want to do, or create. And I thought that was really cool and I thought that was a solid point, especially for a lot of us that are struggling with that or trying to figure that out. You know, deciding what are the parts of your life that you want to have and adapting them and adding them and not being one dimensional. You don't have to be stuck in a box. You know, you we're all multi-dimensional. We have multiple parts of our personality and it's okay to express those or follow multiple passions. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but now we're moving on to the love part of this book. And um, and one thing I thought was interesting was this, this idea of a cohabitation effect. So she talks about how you shouldn't date or you shouldn't move in with anybody until you're ready to marry that person because a lot of us can choose relationships on just convenience because someone's around because we're, we get complacent. And so she talked about how <laughs> dating somebody or moving in with them is almost like a gym membership where you get locked in. And it's almost like just because you've been a member there for so long, you're falling, you're like, you get caught in this consistency and you're more likely to stay in a relationship or a gym membership that you aren't really using or isn't really serving you. Um, and so the idea there is to not move in until you're ready to marry this person because you don't want to get stuck in something and then get divorced down the road. That would suck. We don't want that. Peace and love. <laughs> so the next thing she talks about in the book, especially the love part of it, is how marriage is one of the most important decisions we can possibly make in our lives. But a lot of 20-somethings have been replacing that part of their lives with work and they put off that decision. This is, I'm going to be honest, this is what I usually see. Either people post engagement photos at like 17 and barely graduating high school or they wait and wait and wait and focus on work and then when the, the 30 comes around they're like, oh shit, my eggs are drying up, what do I do? <laughs> you know? And so, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I that the idea of getting married, I like it. I mean, I don't want to do it until a little later, um, but it's nerve wracking because a lot of us, I think, don't want to make the same mistakes our parents have made and we don't want to get divorced. We don't have to go through all the crap that comes with that, right? So, so making that decision important and what she says is not to wait um, and not to focus on work only and then, and then have marriage be an afterthought, but explore relationships and explore relationships that matter and that are important that are going to either help you define what you really want or that are going to teach you what you need to know and prepare you for the next relationship or someone who's serious marriage material. If you want to have fun, awesome. Have as much fun as you possibly can have. But at the same time, 
if you want to get married eventually, it's a good idea to start thinking about that and what kind of person do you really want to start dating and what kind of person do you see as marriage material and all that kind of stuff. So now moving on to the brain and body part of the book and this, one of the chapters she has is called Forward Thinking where she talks about how your brain develops from back to front meaning the pleasure, the stuff that feels good develops first and then the actual critical thinking and judgment part of your prefrontal lobe develops later, <laughs> which explains why a lot of us do stupid stuff growing up and then we look back and we're like, what was I thinking? And another cool part of that chapter is she talks about how between ages 20 and 30, your brain is the most flexible and it has the most neuroplasticity. And that doesn't mean if you're past 30, there's no hope for you, you're stuck. Or if you're before the age, nothing's gonna stick. It just means, because you can still make those changes, but it just means during this time period, that's when you really wanna focus on what habits you wanna develop long term, which is awesome because that's a lot of stuff that we talk about here on Peaky Ryan, you know? So that I think was interesting. If you really want habits to stick, if you wanna create stuff um, within your brain, because apparently this is as big as your brain's gonna get, then you wanna choose habits and patterns of behavior that are really gonna benefit you long term and not just the short term, y'all I'm gonna get bucket all day, every day. But, but stuff that's like doing the gratitude journal that we talked about, doing affirmations, like a physical routine that you do, eating healthy, eating right, whatever, whatever you wanna do. If you wanna get shwaisty pants, all day, every day, and that is the the life goal for you, then do it, because I want you to be happy. But if you want some other habits, whatever habits you wanna create, now is the time to do it. Um, but anyway, those are some nuggets and tips that I picked up. There's obviously so much more, but I don't want this video to be like half an hour because I probably couldn't sit through half an hour. Um, but this is a really good book. I'll leave a link below if you guys want to check that out. Um, and also, I want to know, if you have read this book, what would you think of it? What were some of the stuff that you got out of it? Um, and what are some of your favorite books too? Comment below and let a brother know. Um, and yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. This shirt is gonna pop off. Do you even lift, bro? Yeah. Damn. A little tight.